Further. 
her and see what we got. Of course, I, I, I just got ahead of myself. There's the blood substitute on the uh, counter right there. And of course, we always remind us to eat, drink, and be scary. That's always a motto of ours. Ah, 
mailbox. After I, I rest in the, in the unliving room, get my strength up, I hobble on down to the mailbox. Now, <laughs> our poor mail carrier, not only is our last name Gal Monster, but I also put a thing inside of the mailbox to hold the uh, letters down and the change that uh, to send the mail, the, the, uh, the letter, the mail through with. So here's this manky looking hand every time he opens up the, uh, the mailbox to put things into. First time or two, uh, we didn't get mail for uh, at least a week. <laughs> but I enjoy watching them. Do. He, they've gotten used to it by now. I'm waiting for a new one to take over. I, I, that's, I'm going to try to get a camera on that one the first day. Think that comes in kind of handy, huh? It kind of, you've got to have a good thing around the house. Okay. Now, that was the inside of our house. This is the outside of our house. Our home is called Gargoyle Manor. There's a reason for it. I love to collect gargoyles. Now, this is our Halloween tree. Every year, I put out a, a new jack-o'-lantern on the limbs of the Halloween tree. Well, in the summertime, all the leaves have uh, bloomed out. So it's covering the, uh, the jack-o'-lantern, so you can't see them. Now, when the fall comes, the leaves go away. It looks like the tree, the tree has bloomed out jack-o'-lanterns. So that's a little that's a little tradition I like to uh, to keep going. I've got to uh, not quite my age of jack o' lanterns yet, but I've gotten pretty close to last oh, 10, 15 years now. We've got more than that on there now. That was an old picture. Of course, the gargoyles. And if you notice, I like weeds. I like the wild look. This is only on one part of our house. Um, Ah, the family car. Can't be a monster without a family car. A hearse. This one is a 1996 uh, Cadillac Eagle. I got it from New York. Uh, they brought it down on a flatbed. Now, don't know if it's so or not, but what they told us was this was used in 9-11. Now, when we first got it, in a hearse, how many people have been or been in a hearse or near the, in, the where you sit, sit at. You, okay, you know that in the uh, seats behind you that there's these sliding glass windows. Well, you, know, that they, they, you can open them like this, slide them. Well, when I first got it, every time I would go somewhere and come back, it would be open. Well, I would close it. Well, when I come back out to go somewhere else, it would be open again. I'd close it, take off, go somewhere to town, come back out, it would be open again. I'd close it up again. I'd go and park it, and it kept going like that for several years. It, they've calmed down now. Uh, I, I, I think whoever or whatever it was just liked to be uh, seen or felt. So anyway, nice hearse. It's got lots of room. I don't do the, what people, everybody says, oh, get a hearse. I, I put um, stereo speakers in it, or I put benches in the back, or I would, I would do all kinds of modifications to it. I don't want modifications. I wanted a hearse. I didn't want a fancy party car. I wanted a real life hearse. So that's what, I, so I left it exactly the way I've got, I found it. Uh, they're enjoyable. So this is our family car. Can I ask a question? Yes. Is that your ideal model, or are you looking for something vintage if it came along? Well, or? the first one I had was a uh, 1982 Buick Cadillac. Uh, Buick. It was black. Now everybody, it was a black hearse. It looked like a hearse, but everybody would ask me, "Okay, is it a Cadillac?" I'd say, "No, it's a Buick." Well, it's not a real hearse. Okay. So I got this one. It's a Cadillac. Guess what? It's not black. Not a real hearse. <laughs> so I'm not worried about it. No, uh, I'm, if I could just keep is this one ready. It's actually silver, 
sort of a gray silver uh, tone, and the, the back part of it up here is, this part up here is actually black, but it's more of a gray, so I call it gray shadow. It matches a lot of compliments. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen some persons where they're pink and green. We have a friend who's a pink one. Yeah, I, I don't want a pink one or a green one. But anyway, it's, it's a, it's a, I do have a little, uh, on the very end, it's got a, a little knobby thing we put on it. It's a skull. So we did put a little bit of extra stuff on it, but very little. All right, let's go. Ah, uh, hobbies. <laughs> every monster, every real life monster that wants to struggle through life, especially nowadays, got to have hobbies. My hobby is putting things together. What kind of models? What kind of models? Monster models. I don't do cars. I don't do airplanes, battleships, or anything like that. It's got to be a monster, period. It's the only kind of model I'll put together. Um, actually, I'm working on uh, the Michael Myers Halloween from uh, Monarch, I believe it is. Yeah, pretty close. And so that's the next one I'm working on right now with all the doodads and paints. I love putting them, put them together, especially when you, if it's a Frankenstein model, monster model, because it makes me feel close to being Dr. Frankenstein without having to go out and do all the pesky digging and sewing body parts up and stuff. But that'll come a little later. I have lots of hobbies. Um, as you can see, uh, I repaint a lot of things uh, if they're monster really. This one was uh, Don Post. A styrofoam uh, Frankenstein stood about this high when it, the original paint was basically he was yellow all over with black pants and black coat and, and it was just, that was it, no hair, uh, no colorations, that was it. So I said I could do a little better than that. So I, I started practicing on him and I think he looks a little bit better now. He's, he's got scars. And I put up some neck bolts in him. They actually had little knobs on top of the head because of licensings, license reasons, that type of thing. Anyway, the, the one that's behind me that's upside down is the, the gigantic Frankie. So I thought I'd do this one first and then I would try my hand at that. I've only had it for like eight years now. But I'm kind of gearing up for them to, to work it. All right, let's see what we got. Oh. The other part of my hobbies is mask making, latex masks. Now, mine's not perfect. They're not something that you're going to get $100 out of or even 10 but I do like the hobby. I like making my masks by hand. A lot of the, the ones that uh, nowadays everybody does molds, they do sculptures, and, and they can make, you know, mass produced and they can make, just keep going. Mine, my masks are original because I can only make one. And because I build it right on the sculpture. And I do it piece by piece. And I'm going to tell you my little secret. I use tissue paper or the uh, paper towel with latex. And I build it up. I put it piece by piece after I do the sculpture. And I do it and then I just peel it right off. And once I paint it, you can't see any of the scenes, and it doesn't look too bad. I was right proud pr pr of this one. This was a zombie, zom possessed zombie, I called it. So that way, if you want to look the part of a monster, you, at least you can put on your own skin over top of this. It looks kind of like skin. So that's the other part of my hobbies. It keeps me with my heritage. Ah, more hobbies. This is my back room. This is my laboratory. Um, a lot of it is old embalming equipment. I got it in an estate sale. Uh, there was a case that, uh, that they had back in the 1930s that had um, things called trunk cars. That's the thing that they stick, stick it to you to release the fluids and put the... Uh, the uh, embalming fluid into with. 
Uh, there were things such as, oh, there was talcum powder in it. There was uh, clip, clippers for fingernails. There was the stuff that would uh, seal your mouth and your eyelids together. It had a whole lot of cool stuff. Plus, I had, I got the uh, the fellow's um, certificates that I hang on the wall. So, and 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 his uh, his um, table there. Oh, it's not a surgical table, but it's the uh, examination table. That's what it's called. Got it in a state cell. So I think, okay, if he came with us, I'd make him happy by displaying all of his accoutrements. Plus, let's see, what else do we have here? I have my chemicals, I have my electrical gizmos, and I have, of course, a corpse that I put together. He's, you can kind of see a little leg there, he's kind of hid in back there. It took me about 12 months to put him together and paint him. Is that a flask back here? Yep, that's a flask. I use it on my show. I mix up Kool-Aid and tell people it's chemicals and I take a big swig of it. And uh, like on the chat lines, they go, you know you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> like, I'm a monster. I'll do it. All right, let's see what else we got. Ah, yeah, well, okay, that was kind of cool. I just got this this past uh, year for, for Halloween. It's a, a brain, you throw the switch and he talks and the brittle brain goes boom, 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 like that. So I thought that would go well with the um, with the uh, all the laboratory equipment. Oh, the stuff that's right above him, that's what I was talking about. This stuff here called memo, that's the stuff that uh, will plaster your eyelids and your mouth together. That you want to relax? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This may be a little so do you think most embalmers seal the lips or do you think they sew them? Well, I think in the old days they used to sew them. I think nowadays it's just not practical. And I think they used the, the, the iPad. Odds are they use super glue now. Super glue does everything. So. <laughs> if they could get away with duct tape, I guess, <laughs> would be a different. Okay, that's my other part of uh, the laboratory. I like to work on uh, winged monkeys. You gotta have a winged monkey, you know, to send out to take care of the neighbors. Of course, we don't have neighbors anymore. We used to have neighbors, <laughs> but they all died. Don't know why, but I guess they got old mostly. But we, we have only very few neighbors that's way down the road from us. And we don't, they don't visit. Never knew why. That's the, that's the, that's the other side of being a monster. Most people don't really understand you. They see you're outside of your house. They see you living dressed like this on good days. And I do dress like this on good days. And, and especially with a name like Gal Monster, they kind of shy away. But that's their loss. I still, I love living the way I do. And I'll continue it for another 100 years. Ah, another part of my typical day is that I'll work on my show. I probably, I'm not even going to ask, has, how many people see my show? Probably oh, nobody. <laughs> well, one person I do know, my friend Gary, he's seen my show. He's been on my show a few times. But anyway, my show is Monster Movie Night. You can see it online. Uh, easy enough, monstermovienight.com. I do an internet horror hosting show. I play public domain, old public domain, classic, low-budget B-movies. Now, a lot of people, a lot of the hosts love to trash them and dismiss them and make fun of them and this stuff. I, w I do the opposite. I don't care how bad the film is, I will put it, it's the greatest thing in the world because somebody took the time to make it. And if it hadn't been for those people taking their time to make these really low budget movies, a lot of us wouldn't want to be collectors or aficionados or, well, monsters or even horrors. So I always say this is the best thing in the world on my show. I've only had one film, I'm going to give myself away, even though I did say it was great on my show, I realized after I watched it off my, uh, on my show, 
that I really should have uh, watched it before I put it on my show. It was called Blood, Fe uh, Blood Feast. Blood Feast. I think it was Blood Feast. Herschel Gordon Lewis? Yeah, it was a turkey movie. And I used it for Thanksgiving because it had a turkey monster. That's what the synopsis said. Turkey monster. It was. Oh. Yeah, it was a turkey monster. It had a paper mache head. It was fun. I won't be showing it again. Anyway, this is this is uh, another room that used to be our undead living room. I turned it into my set. So this, if you ever see my shows online or pick up one of my DVDs, which are free, this is what on the other side of the camera. That's this is this side of the camera. That's what it looks like. I use a lot of my props are artifacts from my museum that I collected over the years. So I try to, to uh, combine them with the films that uh, that kind of go together. So like if it's a vampire movie, I pull out all my vampire uh, models or, or books or whatever I have on vampires. That's me. That's the next part of doing the book. Okay, 
couple of years ago, we bought a uh, shower curtain with the yeah. cutout of the uh, psycho. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the mother. Yeah, yeah that would be cool. <clears throat> Whose picture is that? Hey, once we, and we're back to our bed, to the coffin. And I think that that is that is that is it. That's a typical day of being a monster. Any questions? What do you think the best movie you've shown is? Which one really turned out like almost an A that I've shown? Mm -hmm. Well, see the very the best the best movie that I've I've, I've gotten to show uh, with permission and whatever it is uh, I liked was uh, Theater of Blood, Vincent Price. Uh, another one, actually, I got to show was a Universal film, and that was The Black Cat with uh, Karloff and Lugosi. It is actually in public domain. I uh, didn't think it was at the time, but, <laughs> but, I, it, it, but it is. So most everything that I've got on my website is public domain or independent made, and they've given me permission. Uh, in fact, this past year, uh, a group got together and made a film called Tales of Dracula, and they made it like the old Universal films. It had the, the Wolfman, had Dracula, Frankenstein monster, and uh, I had met the guy who played Frankenstein monster. His name was Joe Muro, and he uh, basically emailed me, wanted to know, "Hey, would you like to show our film on your uh, on your show?" I'm like, "Okay, sure. I, I'll take any film I can get if you if they'll let me." And so that was a good one too. So it's been a lot. I can't name. I could probably sit here and name this off because I've got over 200 so uh, episodes. So in our tenth season. And I'm also up for uh, this next year's 2020 Horror Host Hall of Fame Award inducting nominee. So if you're online and you see me anywhere, maybe once they start getting the votes in, say, you know, say hey, he needs to be in there. And I'm, maybe I'll get to go to Ohio for once. <laughs>